Hey everyone, welcome to Speedway Motors Tech Talk. My name is Joe, and today we're here with a new product that we're really excited about. This is our World War II Bomber Seat Kit. Now obviously, what we have in front of us here doesn't look much like a seat, and that's the way you're gonna get this. It comes in a box with all of these pieces, laser cut, bent, ready to assemble. And the other thing about this is, rather than assembling with some hokey pop rivets or something, we're actually including these aluminum rivets to sort of emulate the style of that World War II bomber that this seat might have come out of. So with that being said, there's obviously some tricks to assembling it, and so that's what we're going to show you today is, is how to put this thing together. Um, obviously, the first thing we're going to do is pull all of this paper off. Uh, this aluminum sheet that we make these seats out of comes with this protective film on it to keep it from getting all scratched up during the manufacturing process. Obviously, you don't want to leave that on your seat. So we're going to go through and pull that off of all of these pieces, and then we'll start, start putting it together. Now we're ready to start assembly, and the first step is to put this little, uh, little piece on the side, the, the side panel. It's going to be really important throughout this process to sort of pay attention to the orientation of the panels and kind of make sure that everything's going together the way that it's supposed to. Uh, in this case, this is the outside. This fits this way. The very first thing we're going to do is go through each of these holes and just clean them up. Uh, it's a 3 16 hole that uses a 3 16 rivet, and it's a very, very precise fit, the rivet to the hole. And so if there's any little burr or anything in the hole, it's not going to allow the rivet to go through. So we'll just take the drill bit and just run it through quickly and clean out any burrs that there might be. And we'll do that to, to each of these holes as we assemble the seat. With that done, we're ready to attach these pieces. And you're going to find that some Clecos are going to be really helpful to you in this process. Uh, we sell these and, and you might be used to using a, an eighth inch Cleco. Uh, these 3 16 Clecos are a little bit bigger than maybe what you're used to seeing, but uh, that's the one you're going to want to use here. And so you'll just align the holes the way that you want them. And it seems like usually three or so is sufficient to hold the piece the way that you want it. You might find also having a 3 16 uh, punch is helpful to just kind of help you align the holes a little bit. And once you've done that, then you're ready to start riveting. Uh, you get two boxes of 100 each, and you're going to use most of them. Get the Rivet set like so. Again, make sure to pay attention to the direction that you're installing the rivet. You know, it looks different on the head side than it does on the, the back side. And so make sure that things are oriented the way that you want them. In this case, we're putting the head out towards the outside of the seat. And make sure that the head is flush before you start, uh, before you hit it with the air hammer. So the tools that you're going to need to do this are, you'll need a, like an air hammer, or in this case, this was actually meant to be a riveter. And then you'll need this rivet set, and they're, they're come in different sizes for different size rivets. This one is made for a 3 16 rivet, so it has the right concave shape in it for the, the head of, to fit over the head of the rivet. And then on the back, to back it up, you'll need a bucking bar. And, uh, these are both products that we sell um, that you'll, you'll need to finish this project. And the process is simple. You hold the, hold the riveter over the head, hold the bucking bar over the back, and as you pull the trigger, it's going to smash that rivet. And you'll want to be able to pay attention to the back side of it to kind of see how, see how much smash you're getting on it and, and try to make it even uh, across all of the rivets. Just a couple notes, make sure that you're holding the, the bucking bar over the, the, in the center over the back of the rivet, because if you get off to the side, like so, it's going to put a big gouge in the middle of the rivet and you're not gonna be happy with the way that it looks. Also, make sure that this rivet set stays on the head of the rivet, because if you let it dance off of the rivet across the piece, you're gonna have all these little crescent moon shaped pucker marks in the side of the seat and you're really not going to be happy about that. So, so just be careful. Uh, this, this riveter has a regulator on it and I've got the rail, regulator dialed clear back. You don't need a bunch of oomph to do this. Uh, it's better to kind of sneak up on it than to start with it cranked wide open and just smash the rivet to oblivion or worse, uh, make a big mess on the side of your seat. 
So with all of that being said, we're ready to, ready to start our riveting. And you can see how I was kind of moving the, the rivet set around on the head. It, if you can, if you have room, that can help from, keep you from getting a flat spot on the head of the rivet. And uh, as you can see, I had the bucking bar centered over the back of it. And so then this is what the backside looks like when it's, when it's installed. Right there, that piece is attached. And uh, I mean, this, this is a lot of work, don't get me wrong, but it looks so cool that to me it's worth it. So the next step then is gonna be to attach these brackets. And this is what then kind of ties the seat sides to the, to the base and the back. So we'll Clico them on to hold them. Uh, we'll make sure that we have the holes aligned. And then when I do the rivets, I like to work at the center and kind of work my way out. Um, you know, you might find a different, a different strategy that works, but for me that seems to work pretty well. And uh, it's important that you pay attention to the orientation of these. Uh, you know, the flange is on the outside and then the rivets will go out from the inside. Uh, technically, you could do it either way. The instructions call um, for doing it that way, and I'll, I'll show you in a minute why. Of course, we'll use our Clecos to do this. So the, this piece we put on with the rivets from the outside. This, these flanges, uh, we say to put the rivets in from the inside because then when you attach the base, this row of rivets will go down from the inside and it, it'll look nice to have those rows see, see the heads from the tops. Um, but again, technically you could, you could make this match this if you wanted the heads to point this way, but in our instructions we call for them to go, to go in from the inside. All right, well there's your right side complete, and it'll be the exact same process on the other side, just a mirror image of this one. Just again, make sure to pay attention to the orientation of everything. And we've already assembled our left side, so with both sides done, the good news is that means you're about halfway through the progress, so if you're tired of bucking rivets, you're about halfway there. Now we're gonna move on to the bottom and the back and then rivet all four pieces together. All right, this is our base piece that you're, you'll sit on. This is the back. Uh, it should be obvious, but the back can kind of go either way. You want the, the bells to point down away from where your, your actual back would be. And, uh, you know, again, first thing, we'll just Clico these together and then put this row of rivets in. Um, the back will overlap the base as opposed to the other way around. And there's a little flange on here that'll kind of help you remember that. All right, and now we're ready to attach the sides. And it's kind of exciting because this is the point where it starts to sort of look like a seat and you can see where all your hard work is going. So in this case, we'll start with the left side. It doesn't really matter which side you start with. Just lay this in here like so. This back and bottom will, will sit on top of the flanges that you already installed in the sides. And then you're gonna use Clecos to put it together just like you have been. All right, so with those lined up, we're just gonna start doing our rivets again. And again, just pay attention to the orientation of everything. You've already installed these rivets from the, the inside out, so you'll do the same here from the inside down. That way you'll see the heads of both rows. And uh, now we just gotta put our row of rivets in. All right, that's the last rivet. So what we have now is a really neat, original looking bomber seat that'll be just right at home in a traditional hot rod or um, you know old race car. 
And uh, you know, all the rivets, it's sure a lot of work, but it really does give it kind of that authentic look. Well, hopefully that clears up any questions you may have about the assembly process for these bomber seats. It's a really neat end result, and uh, I can't wait to get these in a car. So as always, let us know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.